for use on Apple branded systems. Hmm. Looks like a MacBook to me. Today's video is brought to you by Fast Host, and they're awesome enough to be hosting a giveaway of the ultimate work from home setup worth up to 5,000 pounds. If you're based in the UK and want to enter, all you have to do is click the link down below and answer the techie test question correctly. What year did Apple announce their intentions to switch to using Intel processors in Macs? I'll explain more later on in the video, so be sure to stick around. Hello everybody, and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be diving into the world of hackintoshing, and keeping with the old tech aspect of this channel that I'm sure all of you are very familiar with, we're going to be installing Mac Mac OS 10.5 Leopard on this HP Compaq 6510B, which is a Windows Vista era laptop. Now I featured this particular laptop in a couple of videos on this channel. We were able to install Windows 11 on this thing up in this video if you want to go check it out. Despite the fact that the CPU in this laptop does not support TPM 2.0 and is currently running Windows XP Professional X64 edition, which we installed in a more recent video. And by the way, yes, the follow-up for that is in the works, but uh, it's just taken a little bit longer than I originally anticipated. So that kind of is uh, on the project shelf for now, the hypothetical project shelf, if you will. But uh, yeah, we're going to be using it today. And the reason we're going to be using this laptop is because it is period specific. This machine was released around the year 2007. You know what else came out in 2007? Mac OS X Leopard. And this machine would have been a perfect candidate to install Mac OS X Leopard on because it meets the minimum system requirements for this operating system. It's got an Intel Core 2 Duo inside, and on the RAM side of things, it's got currently two gigabytes of RAM, though it initially only had one, but that still exceeds and actually doubles Mac OS X Leopard's minimum RAM requirement of 512 megabytes. So this machine would have been perfect to Hackintosh, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. Now, we're going to be using a modified version of the Mac OS 10.5.5 installation CD and I've got that in this package right here even though this is an official case here this is what Mac OS 10 Leopard would have come in we don't have the real Mac OS 10 Leopard installation CD I know I have fooled you all so what's on this CD right here or this DVD rather is a copy of iDenim and iDenim is one of the various uh, modified installation discs that makes it very easy to install Mac OS 10 on non Apple hardware and that's exactly what we're going to be doing right now so let's get into it so the first thing we're going to do is open up the lightscribe dvd drive i already mentioned this in a previous video but yeah we got a lightscribe dvd drive on this thing that brings you back doesn't it to like 2007 2008 and we're going to just turn off the machine or at least from within windows xp here we're going to click on this to go to restart we're going to put the OS 10 DVD case kind of like right in front of Eddie Reliable Trustman there. So you can still see Eddie. He's still watching you. He's still watching you. And here we are at the Darwin X86 uh, initial boot phase here. So we're going to uh, press enter to start iDenim. And actually, I'm using a USB keyboard, which it's not recognizing right now. So we're just going to use the, uh, the laptop's keyboard itself. And it'll load Darwin x86, and from here on out, it's going to be uh, essentially a Mac OS X installation, a standard OS X installation, though the installer itself is going to be a little bit modified, but it should any moment here display the Apple boot screen. There it is. And uh, yeah, we'll be booting up into the installer momentarily here. I probably shouldn't have used the word momentarily because this does take a little while to start up here, at least for its initial, uh, you know, when it's first loading into the installer. But uh, it does work. We just got to give it some time. I guess while it's starting up here, I could give you guys a little backstory behind Mac OS X Leopard. Uh, this was a very significant release of Mac OS X because it was the last release to officially support PowerPC processors. Mac OS 10.6 Snow Leopard did not support PowerPC processors. So uh, here we are at the iDenim installer, and you can see that uh, it looks a little bit different, right? Mainly the background. The background is really the only thing that's been changed visually. Actually, no, we do get a different welcome message here. So it says welcome in iDenim version 1.3 10.5.5 Intel slash AMD. For info to visit the site's iHackintosh team, 
HTTP colon slash slash. I don't know why I said that. iHackintosh.net, developed by Lane and iHackintosh team, artwork by the captain. Okay, ooh, mysterious uh, figure there. So the captain, thanks to the captain for the uh, iDenim artwork and I guess the uh, background here as well. So uh, yeah, we're going to click on continue here. Okay, so here is the... Uh, change log. This isn't really. I mean, normally the license agreement is here, but you can see that it's essentially been replaced with uh, the change log. And this apparently is a preview build of Mac OS X Leopard. If you like it, you have to buy it. Oh, this DVD is a preview of Mac, o Mac OS X Leopard. If you like it, you have to buy a true Mac with the license. I suggest you. I suggest you to not use this to profit making. Okay, so yeah, you got a kind of a Google Translate style uh, English going on here. So yeah, this is not a, a preview version of Mac OS X as I initially thought, but uh, they're just saying that, you know, you are supposed to only run this software on Apple hardware. That is what the license agreement says. But since there is no license agreement, we don't got to worry about that, right? Uh, no, so yeah, we're just going to click on agree to the quote unquote license agreement here. And we're going to uh, get to the select a destination screen. Where do you want to install iDenim version 1.3, 10.5.5? Nowhere! Well, we're going to have to open up the uh, disk utility here to configure the hard drive because it's not going to get recognized, so we'll open up disk utility. There we go. So disk utility is opened up. It's a gathering disk information, so we're going to erase the entire disk here, and we're going to do the volume format as macOS extended journaled, and we're going to call it Macintosh HD. Actually, Hackintosh HD. Yeah, just to, you know, get the full Hackintosh experience here. Uh, yeah, so we'll erase the disk here. There we go. So our one partition is formatted to macOS extended journal. So if we close out of this, we should be able to, yep, there it is, Hackintosh HD. Requires 6.1 gigabytes of space. We've got plenty. Let's continue. And hopefully nothing will go wrong. This is an MJD video, so, you know, you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> Always seems like we run into some sort of issue when I press record. I'm not going to jinx it, though. It's been smooth sailing so far. Let's see if we can keep that up. So we'll click on install. And we're off to the races, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> So it's had about a minute remaining for what feels like five minutes now, so it's definitely longer than a minute. There it is, install succeeded. iDenim version 1.3, 10.5.5 was installed on your Hackintosh HD. All right, so we're gonna restart. So we should get Darwin x86, there it is. So it's got a five second timeout if you wanna press any key to enter startup options as it says there, but we're just not gonna do anything. And It'll begin to load into Mac OS X, which hopefully will be a lot faster now that it's installed on the hard drive. Oh, uh, that's not good. We have the do not symbol, like, over the leaf in the Apple logo. I mean, it's still, the wheel is still spinning, the animation is still going. I mean, that, like, reminds me of the, you know, cannot find boot device screen that you'll get when it's not able to find a partition to boot off of. So yes, in classic MJD fashion, two minutes after I said, oh, hey, isn't it great that everything's going smoothly? We run into a problem. But this is an MJD video after all, and we've run into a whole host of problems in videos like this. Hopefully, we'll be able to find a solution very fast. Speaking of fast and host, let's talk about fast hosts and that giveaway that I mentioned earlier. They're a UK-based web hosting provider that offers everything you need to get a new website up and running in no time. Whether you want to make a WordPress blog or are just in need of a new domain, FastHost has you covered with their affordable hosting plans starting at just £1 per month, and their plethora of supported TLDs. But domains and hosting go great together, and that's why FastHost gives you a free domain with every web hosting plan for the first year. If you need more than just web hosting, check out their affordable virtual private servers hosted out of UK data centers with unlimited bandwidth. Their hosting isn't just limited to servers though, as right now they're hosting a giveaway of the ultimate work from home setup worth up to £5,000. This one's open to all of my awesome UK viewers.
viewers. And to enter, all you have to do is click the link down below and answer the techie test question correctly. What year did Apple announce their intentions to switch to using Intel processors in Macs? So good luck to everybody and huge thanks again to FastHost for putting on this giveaway. So to figure out exactly what's wrong, we're gonna do a force power off here. Actually, let me remove the disk from the drive so it won't try to boot off of that. Uh, we're gonna do a force power off. Okay, so I've pressed a key to invoke the advanced startup options menu, and we're going to uh, type hyphen V, as it says right here, to start up with diagnostic messages. This essentially does a verbose boot, which normally on a Mac, you have to do by pressing command V while it's starting up. In this case with Darwin x86, you have to do it from this boot menu here. So we're gonna do that, and we'll see exactly where this is, uh, hanging still waiting for root device that isn't good so that means that it's not detecting the hard drive there it is again i know exactly why at least i think i know exactly why this is happening if you remember when we installed windows xp x64 edition on this machine we had to go into the bios and change the sata mode to allow the system to treat the hard drive as an IDE drive. Okay, so we're in setup here. We're going to go to system configuration. I believe it was built-in device options. Uh, no, it wasn't this. We'll get out of this here. It was device configurations. Yes. So we're going to change HDD uh, or no SATA native mode. We're going to set this to enable and we will press F10 to accept. Go to file, save changes and exit. Yes. So the installer had no problem recognizing the drive but when the system tries to boot from it, it's not able to detect it. And, you know, it, it wasn't, I mean, again, the system, when you have that option disabled, treats the drive as an IDE drive, which is how we were able to install Windows XP. So just for, just out of curiosity, let's uh, do dash V once again to do a verbose boot, and we'll see if we get that same message. And yeah, it was not showing these messages before, so... This is a great sign, guys. Looks like we did it. So uh, yeah, not a not a serious problem at all, and that normally wouldn't happen uh, if you you know if you had this machine set at factory defaults. Oh boy, we got the intro video. Now I don't believe we have the sound driver working. Even if uh, I did, this is copyrighted music, so I'm not going to be able to play it. But it's playing the intro video. And man, it's it's been a while since I've seen this. This is the this is such a classic. The Mac OS 10.5 intro video. Yeah, there we go. And do that zoom. Boom. Perfect. Okay. Oh, well, <laughs> well that, uh, that's normally not supposed to happen. Uh, not the not the greatest transition there, but um, yeah, here we go. So again, the, the background has been changed to say iDenim. Uh, so we're going to just go with US. We'll go with US for the keyboard layout. Uh, we're not going to transfer. We don't have any information to transfer. How do you connect? Uh, we're going to do local network Ethernet. Okay, TCP IP settings uh, using DHCP. Network configuration failed. We'll not be able to send your registration. Uh, click OK to finish anyway. That's fine. I don't have this connected to the network right now, uh, but we will plug it in and see if the network driver is even functioning properly. Uh, which there's a chance that it won't be. So we'll click on continue to not bother signing in. We can't anyway. Uh, now you can hit, we're not going to bother putting in registration, but we can just hit uh, command Q and we will skip this here. And I am using an Apple keyboard, by the way, at least externally here. So uh, yeah, that, that makes it legit, doesn't it? Oh, I do not want my name to be a bunch of dashes. Okay, uh, we'll do Michael for the name. Actually, we can capitalize. You know what, we'll do MJD. Short name, MJD, password, MJD, verify, MJD, password, hint, MJD. Let's see if it'll allow us to do this. The hint and the password are the same. This is a security risk. Okay, MJD1. Yeah, now it's not the same. There you go. Um, okay, uh, sure, we'll, we'll leave it in the Pacific time zone. That's fine. And it thinks the date is 2007. We'll change that to 2021. I'm actually curious, does this, does this version of OS X suffer from the 2038 problem? It does. It does. Okay, so yeah, you cannot set this to uh, a date in 2038. Don't forget to register. Okay, enjoy your Apple computer. Oh yeah, it's definitely an Apple computer, that's for sure. I denim. So yeah, I believe the default desktop wallpaper is changed, so we don't have the iconic uh, space design. We can change it though, obviously, if we want to, but uh, I denim's got their their branding all over this. But aside from that, it is standard macOS 10.5.5. 
got that keyboard setup assistant. We're not going to worry about that because the keyboard is working. And we've got Finder opened up here. We'll close out of that. And let's check out about this Mac and see... Uh, oh, wow. So this has been changed. Yeah, so this is something that uh, a lot of these custom installation CDs, uh, like you've got iDenim here, you've got iATKOS. Uh, some of these do change uh, the, the design of this here. So it says iDenim version 10.5.5. Really what they're changing is the logo up here. So normally it's just the Apple logo and it says Mac OS X. Uh, so yeah, you got software update. This is a two gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo, two gigabytes of 533 megahertz DDR2 SD RAM. Beautiful. We'll hit more info here to see what the system profiler says. So it thinks this is a Mac Pro 3 comma one. Okay, so no surprise, it's a Mac Pro. It is the Mac Pro from 2008, either the quad core or one of the eight core machines, uh, but they all have the same model identifier. So the model name just says Mac. So yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah, it's always kind of funny to see what specific Mac model that it thinks it's running on. The name of the machine is MJD's Mac Pro 3 comma one. Uh, we, we can change that if we go into system preferences here, which I am going to change the desktop background. Let's see if the original um, like we go to Apple images here. Is it still on here? Oh, we've got the old uh, Panther wallpaper. Let's just go with the old like, yeah, aqua blue from OS X Panther and Tiger. That looks pretty nice. Screensavers, computer name, we can set it. So there it is, MJD's Mac Pro 3 comma 1. So let's go and change that. MJD's totally legit Mac Pro 3 comma 1. <laughs> There's no space in between that. There we go. So we'll change that. And now if we go back to the screensaver, MJD's, oh, I spelled totally wrong. Totally. <laughs> Oh gosh, okay, hang on, hang on. I gotta fix this here, let's go back. All right, so I went ahead and plugged in the ethernet cable to this computer, but as you can probably tell by the fact that we don't have any network settings up here in the system tray, it's not detecting the network card, the ethernet card that's in this machine. So that is unfortunate. It is pretty typical though for these, you know, Hackintosh. I almost wanna say distros, but that's not what they are. I mean, this isn't like it's a Linux distro or anything, but these modified CDs where you know, it's got Darwin x86 and everything uh, because, you know, you're not installing this on Apple hardware. I mean, that's like the entire thing is you're installing it on non-Apple hardware. There's going to be issues that arise, especially with drivers, uh, because, you know, you have different hardware here. This is not exactly the same hardware uh, that OS 10 is normally supposed to be installed on. So, uh, yeah, we don't have any network drivers. We don't have a, the sound driver working either. So that's why we didn't get any sound during the intro. But I think that this is a great stopping point for for today's video because, well, we successfully did what we set out to do. We installed Mac OS X Leopard on this non-Apple machine right here, and it works. It works totally fine, I mean, with the exception of it not having a network driver or sound driver installed currently. And that is something we could touch on in a follow-up video, perhaps? Certainly a possibility, but for now guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, be sure to get subscribed down below, and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already, to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.